en esta instancia es un gran honor para tener el líder de nuestro caucus demócrata, el chairman del caucus. Este es el hispano, quien es el líder más alto en el Congreso. Es un gran honor para tener congresista Javier Becerra de California, nuestro líder en el Congreso. Gracias, Javier. by thanking a good friend but uh, a future colleague, uh, Darren Soto, for all that he has done as a state legislator, as a senator, for so many of the people here in Florida, but for taking on the challenge of becoming the member of Congress from District 9 here in Florida. We are, we're not just proud to have you, Darren, as the candidate that we hope will win on August the 30th. We are expecting you to win because we need you in Washington, D.C. I know everyone in this room who's standing here behind you, not just figuratively, but literally, uh, is going to work their hearts out to make sure that on August the 30th, you are the nominee on the, from the Democratic Party to become the next member of Congress. And I can tell you with all my heart that I join them you become our next congressman because I think you heard it from the man himself. I, I believe Darren said it so well. What we want to do is we want to let every working family in the 9th District of Florida know that if they're going to work hard, they'll be able to buy a, a home. If they're going to work hard, their kids can aspire to go to college. And if they're going to work hard, they'll be able to retire in dignity. You know, most, most Americans can, would tell you that if you give me a chance to do those things, I'll take care of the rest. Because if you can just let me know that the American dream, the door has opened enough for me to be able to buy that first home, send my kids to a decent college, and then know that I can live in dignity after decades of working for this country, they'll say, I'll, I'll take care of the rest. And my kids will take care of the rest. And we'll make this country better than what we, we saw when we were growing up. And Darren Soto gets that. And we need a congressman, Darren Soto, who's gonna fight for families who work hard and recognize that we don't need people to do things for us. We just need to let people understand that we have to have an opportunity to do it for ourselves. And I have a feeling that with Darren Soto, with a congressman, Darren Soto, you're gonna have a champion who not only
Jared Soto va a ser un campeón y no solo un campeón para los de habla español va a ser un campeón para todos y lo que necesitamos es alguien que entiende que cualquier familia que trabaja duro solo lo que quiere es saber que si tengo oportunidad puedo comprar esa primer casa puedo mandar mis hijos a la universidad y puedo ya después de décadas de trabajo retirarme y saber que puedo, puedo vivir en dignidad con un campeón como Jerry Soto es lo que vamos a tener y por eso tenemos que luchar para elegir como nuestro próximo congresista de, de, del Distrito 9 de la Florida, Darren Soto y por eso estoy aquí yo, porque sé bien que ustedes quieren luchar para Darren y yo quiero estar aquí con ustedes luchando también, muchas gracias and we want to take a few questions from the audience we'll be available for individual questions for all the reporters afterwards You may want to identify yourself with the press. Okay. Christopher Duncan, uh, Vice President of Broward County Young Democrats. I'm here today because here in Central Florida, primarily, we, we face a few amount of things uh, having to deal with minorities being racial profiled against. And uh, my support to the future Congressman Darren Soto is uh, to ask, you know, do you have any specific plans or what are some of your plans to make sure that all Americans are treated equally and that we don't continue to face this barrage as when we're putting the category of minorities where sometimes that may seem like we have less rights than being an American even though we are an American. Do you have any specific plans to help with that racial profile, especially with many of our minorities that have been killed in police involved shootings and so forth, things like that? In my career in the Florida Senate, I was proud to help out on two particular initiatives to address these issues. One, I was honored to work with Senator Geraldine Thompson to bring $1.8 million to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to investigate any deaths by local law enforcement so that independent investigations will happen. We need to make sure that justice happens when justice is necessary and justice is deserving. And so it requires an independent watchdog. And so we put our money where our mouth, look, mouth is and made sure that the, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement has the funding to be able to investigate any time we have a young man or a young woman shot, and far too many of them are of, Afri are of our African American community. Many of them are from our Hispanic community. And this is not only a problem for one community, it's a problem for all communities, regardless of what community the person who has been shot at comes from. The other issue I've worked on with Senator Chris Smith is by providing more funding and making it easier for local law enforcement to have body counts. We need to know what's happening in these interactions. Many times we have a, so many great members of our law enforcement community and they do the right thing. But every now and again you get a scenario where that's not the case. And so we live in a modern society where we have the technology to know what happened. And we need to put the resources forward to make sure we continue to know what happened. And in Congress, I will continue to encourage our federal government to invest in allowing for grants for um, body cameras for police, allowing for grants for training to make sure that we don't racially profile in this state, and to make sure that we have uh, sufficient grants for uh, genetic testing to make sure that we know that the right, with DNA testing, we know that the right person um, was being convicted, and in addition, continuing on this journey to make sure that our local and federal and, and state law enforcement have the funds to do independent investigations. Um, not, not the least of which will be that we'll continue on the federal level to work with our local and uh, state officials to continue for what needs are going forward. So thank you for that great question. I believe our gentleman back there had a health care question. Well, it's a PA moment. Thank you for bringing it up. Uh, you brought a point uh, of Puerto Rico. We're getting so many Puerto Ricans here, and it's a big issue. Uh, a lot of families think that they're better off here than in Puerto Rico, so therefore they're trying to come here thinking that it's better. But what's better if Congress makes allowances equal to the states to Puerto Rico. For example, 
the Medicare premiums that are paid to health insurance companies in Puerto Rico are about 40% of what is paid here. Therefore, doctors are affected, and if doctors are affected, hospitals are affected, and they'll be coming here, depleting the health care services of Puerto Rico. Second, the elderly are not getting the extra help that otherwise all the other states are getting. The extra help is a subsidy that the Social Security system provides to the people in this country based on the income. Well, guess what? In Puerto Rico, 60 to 70 percent of those people would qualify. And then the other thing is Obamacare, you could get insurance here by working. For two people, it's about $12,000. You get basically all your health insurance premium paid. In Puerto Rico, they depend on the government, on the meager premiums that they get from Medicaid, and that's not enough. Therefore, you see a lot of families. That's why you see a lot of, especially a lot of children that have a disability coming to this country in seeking of health care. Therefore, Congress is at the, at the point where they could do something about it. I, knew, I know Congressman Becerra has been working on it because I've been following him. And that's been put up in Congress. So what we need is for Darren Soto to come and say, yes, I would approve or I would support what the other congressmen, Hispanic congressmen, are doing for Puerto Rico. And, and there's a, these are things that are health care issues. And any health care, any family that has a health care issue in Puerto Rico, believe me, and you know that, they will be coming here. So let's put the burden on Congress to give them what it needs financially so they don't have to make that move, which they don't want to do. So first of all, we welcome all Puerto Ricans who come from the island to Central Florida. And we have fought to make sure that there is more money for schools, for colleges, for roads around here. But we do it in a bittersweet fashion because we don't want to have everybody come here at the expense of the island. And that's why making sure that the federal government is being fair through the commission that's been set up and is getting aggressive with bringing more capital back into Puerto Rico is so critical. Our economies are connected, both culturally and through jobs and through trade. And so first, there's the Medicare cuts that you were talking about that we need to re-examine. Second, we need to make sure that Puerto Ricans on the island have equal access to the healthcare exchanges and that our seniors are put on the same level playing field as far as payments through Medicare coverage as they are here on the mainland. And we know the story. There was a tax exemption that brought great prosperity from for 30 or 40 years, and then it was taken away in 96. And we saw a decline based upon that with so many pharmaceutical companies leaving the island. So we know the federal government has an obligation to intervene and to help bring Puerto Rico back to prosperity. And that's not only important for the island, that's important for right here in Central Florida. I'm also giving, gonna give our chair a, a chance to discuss the issue. Well, I appreciate what uh, Senator Soto has said and look forward to working with him as Congressman Soto. There will be probably no one who could speak with a more decisive voice on the issues affecting Puerto Rico except for the uh, resident commissioner who comes from Puerto Rico, the Darren Soto, because the, the number of Puerto Ricans that will be represented by the congressman from the 9th District of Florida will probably surpass almost anyone. Perhaps maybe there's a district in, in New York that might have more, but uh, I don't know about that. I think Darren will likely be as close as you come to a mainland USA representative who understands the issues that Puerto Ricans who have recently come from the island are feeling. I will say this, many of us fought to make sure that the legislation that did become law included economic development uh, and reform of our uh, our services that we provide at the federal level, as you mentioned, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, SSI, uh, when it came to Puerto Rico, because one of the difficulties that Puerto Rico has is that it's working from a, uh, an ingrained deficit because it's treated differently. And 
it always starts off behind. And it, when, when you have a situation where the economic times are difficult as they were 2008, 2009 moving forward, it gets even worse. And so while we saw the strain that we suffered in this country economically as a result of the crash, uh, the Wall Street crash, in Puerto Rico came and hit even harder because the recovery came slower. And so if you, if you have institutionalized deficits, and I don't mean by money, I mean by the, the, the treatment is different, you start from a lower level and it's harder to get yourself out of that hole. And so we're gonna need members of Congress to understand that well. Darren Soto will be one who does. And the benefit will be not just for the Puerto Ricans who live on, on the island of Puerto Rico, it will be a benefit to the people of the United States of America to have a partnership with Puerto Rico that allows them to thrive and prosper so that together we thrive and, and prosper. Thank you. Thank you.